happens here at the project in May. So um, we only have a few weeks of programming left. Um, maybe you've heard <laughs> we have um, our spring thing on Saturday. We're really excited about it. Um, Zach Waller, Mark, um, good lord, Mark, <laughs> Mark Andre Robinson, and Khalil Huffman are installing a sanctuary for us for that event. We're really, it's just, I, I'm really excited to see what happens in there. Um, Jace Clayton, who's maybe better known as DJ Rupture, will be playing music. So we hope you'll all come. It's, I've been telling people, the best, cheapest gala you could ever attend at a sliding scale of five to 20 bucks. So please come hang out with us on Saturday night. On Monday, Ty Freedom Ford, who's one of our ESB fellows, will be reading with Stephanie Gray. That would be a great evening. And on Wednesday, Ansel American and Rick Bill Rubenstein will be here. But, I mean, you know, it's just a really good week. Um, without further ado, Julie is going to be introduced tonight by her friend and publisher, Leanne Brown. So I'm going to welcome Leanne and look at started. Truly need to know introduction. I can see to this crowd, and as you know, the performance has already begun. Um, but I did want to read her bio just from the um, recent upcoming Tinder Buttons project we've been working on B. And I put a few notebooks around in the audience. There's nine little composition books that say first grade, second grade, and third grade. If you'd like to take any notes at all during the performance, we'd appreciate it if you give it back to Tinder Buttons Press. If you have any documentation to, from tonight, please email us at Tinder Buttons press at gmail.com. We're trying to document as much of Julie as possible in all times. Thank you for taking me. Um, Julie Izell Patton is the author of Using Blue to Get Black, Notes for Some Nominally Awake, and A Garden Perverse, or What Else Do You Expect from Dirt? Julie's work has appeared in Echo Language Reader, Critophoria, and Nocturnes. Room for Opal, a sound text installation that Julie created as a Green Horizons fellow at Bates College is lovingly explored in Jonathan Skinner's Listening with Patton from On Contemporary Practice 2008. Julie's performance work featured at the Stone, the Jazz Standard, and noted international venues emphasizes improvisation, collaboration with you, and otherworldly choreographics. She has shapeshifted into a cat witch for Sock Doll, a Jack Tail Gnome written by Leanne Brown and Tony Torn. She's been Desdemona in Othello's Syndrome with Uri Kane in 2009, a Grammy nominated CD. She's been the voice on Ringtone from Robbie Coltrane's At Night. She has flipped Opal Whiteley into Onyx Blackley's voice of Doom for Barnaby McCall's. McAll's Triplum, Triplum. Her public dissertation, Chateau in the Ghetto, is an arch architectural dwelling space for grounding <coughs> creative util utilitarian projects, illiteracy, ritual maintenance work, neighborhood love economies, and the familial philosophy of, quote, making do in the urban desert of Cleveland, Ohio, and I think also in the East pillage, as she calls it. The writing of this home ec project is exhibited literally and artifactually in its own Salon de Refuse, or she says Salon de Refuses, I think. And spin-offs of these season-based unreal reality shows reflect Julie's practice as a native plant and green space advocate. She, she's created Let It Be Gardens, She's created Rockefeller Park Project, Poet Tree Mitigation Works, Market Gardener, Sun Raw, and Eco Arts Educator Old School. Julie is a recipient of the Arca Acadia Arts Foundation Grants 2008. In that box. Ah, okay. Okay. No, no, no. She lives in the East Village. I'm not going to turn off the stage. <laughs> Mother, center mother of community gardens wherever she is, and here is 
This is a free for all. It's a forum. It's a talk show. It's a no show because I'm not here. I didn't. I got a, No, I didn't sleep last night because I had to prepare uh, for court this morning and my never-ending affordable housing scandal at 111 Center Street. And um, I represented myself pro se. I, I found out. My lawyer was in cahoots with the other lawyer. Mm -hmm. Of course, they've been trying to get me to buy out for 10 years. Mm. They spent half a million dollars. Wow. Because they live on my building. There are 30 people in my old uh, habitat. And the new landlords are the new land levels that service um, thought, well, she's a colored girl. She'll be mm. easy for it. Mm. <laughs> So they lit on me like white on rice and um, it's been an education. A lot of folks don't know what's really going on in the city, but then you do, you have a sense. You have the details, the devil, the land devil is in the details. So, but these games are old as time in terms of forcing people off the land and um, also resistance strategies to say and hold on to a sense of place. So I brought my sense of place here today. Um, these images are from a, a trash dump in Cleveland, Ohio, where I left there in 1974. I first came to New York City. And um, do I need that? I first came to New York City in 1976. This is my 40th year. And uh, technically, my last year. So this event was also planned as a memorial. And I also, the only way I could find time to do a semi, if there is such a thing, memorial for the late Virgie Ezel Patton, my mother, uh, who passed last year, conveniently enough, on my birthday. So. That birthday got screwed up. And then this year was my 60th birthday. And I wasn't able to celebrate that one either. So, all of you, this is not your state And I thank you for coming. There's something very inconvenient about mics. Do you notice that? You know, it, it, it's talking out into a room and projecting feels more human. And this feels more medical. Like, is this a GYN exam? <laughs> Spectrum from somebody's mouth. I, I want to introduce Vimy Burroughs. It's I remember Viney, who I hadn't talked to for a while because 
I go back and forth to Cleveland, and what am I going to do? I couldn't just tend to family matters. I ended up getting myself in trouble, saving a building, and stealing land that was in the land bank. Um, that um, was an interesting kind of underground railroad adventure, um, going through the back door. And here are two Cleveland um, deposits. They're actually, one is on the down low in Cleveland, Naj, who uh, is quite, has uh, quite a reputation here in the city. You, he's an award-winning uh, vocalist. Uh, what, was it, uh, what was the last award you got? You, <laughs> number one on the shout charts? Outvoice. Out Outvoice. <laughs> out and there's a, a, what's the name of the film? That, out on the tracks. Out on the tracks was released last year. Yeah. Yes, and so um, I ran into Naj by happenstance. I happened to be in town, and I was going to the West Side Market, which is an old hundred-year-old um, food market. And I, I thought I was in the East Village for a second because I saw him cutting diagonally across a field, and he was there to open for. Uh, the gay games. Um, but, but, so anyway, so I brought him back to the habitat for uh, humanity, and um, he ended up returning to stay to play with the centipedes on the lower level, right, <laughs> of the building, and just to spend um, time writing. It's a, the building's highest and best use for me is when writers come, artists come to do their things. It's a completely impossible, improbable project without funding, except for the funding that kind of drops through the clouds and makes purple rain, because uh, the day that Prince died was the day that I found out that it grant an award that came out of the blue when some of the neighborhood kids were making jam and they were using their old adding machine to uh, count their catch for the day, and then this $5,000 check arrived. And so I found out that that was from Prince. All it said on the envelope uh, was love, the number four, and then one another as one word, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and people. So I was very, very touched because there was all this purple rain in the air about this passing. And, I, and then I think I was also very upset because Roland, uh, so this, in a way, is a memorial. It's a memorial for my mother, for all the struggles and losses that have been going on in the city. Um, and as it's turned into a tourist hike, as museums just become banks, all these issues, I don't, you're familiar with them, I don't need to go into it. Um, quite a number of people in the East Village have been taking their leave of long-term absence. Um, so I think Roland, I got the, Bob, where are you? I, I'm here. I'm Roland kind of, the Jardin Robert. Yeah, uh, you want to say something about him? Come he on here. The essence of, one of the essences of Lower East Side Life, right over on uh, Avenue B and, uh, and Street. 9th Street, the okay. building that he helped to rehab. Um, you know, he took a bunch of poets down to Nicaragua in 1988 as U.S. poets invaded the uh, Nicaragua, um, and uh, one of the, like me, helped to reopen the New York Poets Cafe after it closed for almost a decade. Yeah, we missed Roland the whole lot. He was the guy who stayed behind. So he made a couple of films, yeah. made a couple of films about teachers in New York most recently. A film about poetry in Nicaragua called Masul, um, after about Ruben Darío and his uh, lineage. You know, that's a, uh, well, we miss him very, 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 Yeah, he was an interesting poet. I first came across Roland um, at Teachers and Writers, Maria Damon, who went to school with him. Yeah. And um, um, he, uh, Madeline, um, Erica Hunt's daughter, Madeline Ehrlich, said that he was a real life Mr. Rogers for the kids in the neighborhood because he gave this annual. There's a very, if you look at E.V. Greed, you can find a very interesting account 
of the Christmas parties that he used to throw. And, and Bob, did you play Santa Claus? That is correct. <laughs> because that became a question in this series of uh, E.B. Grieve um, pieces. But, and he didn't skimp on gifts. He, there were Lego sets and all kinds of things, and anybody who came in got great eggnog. Um, and John Ferris's memorial, uh, anyone? I, you know, I misplaced my glasses in this room. So, if you see them, so I'm really blind as a bat, and that's <laughs> screwing me up. Um, anybody want to say anything about John Ferris? His memorial was just a few days ago. Before that, there was Fred Holland. Um, anyway, my own. Tons and tons and tons and tons of people. So, because this is where I live my life, and then when I go to Cleveland, I am, what do I do, Paul? He calls me Spanky. You, you wanna, why, why do you call me Spanky? <laughs> he said that I'm like, let's go, kid. So I, never, I don't where I get that energy from, but it only happens when I go there because in the Rust Belt, there's a lot of stuff to clean up and a lot of stuff to do in a city where over half a million people left and they left their shit behind. So all this stuff that you see happening, except for the scene before, which was when there was a high-speed police chase. Um, what was that? It was a low-speed. Hmm? Low-speed. Low-speed. Low speed. Right? <laughs> anyway, um, so this, this is a real permaculture edge with, um, what can I say? Across the street is a low-income housing project, and all kinds of things happen. Uh, Tanya Foster and Eric Barr used to meet. I took the bullets out of the picture. There were um, images of the bullet holes that came through the back wall. But this area is also undergoing or gone through um, gentrification. But you can, that's the the um, the white building across the street is the. Um, low income housing project. This is old school community kitchen. Everything in there is like a lazy Susan refrigerator. We wanted the children to be aware of all the um, analog stuff. So, and they actually like typewriters better. Um, so, I'm going to um, read, read a few. This is because I went and represented myself in court today, pro se. This is Julie in prose. <laughs> and let's get around. And then we'll get to I didn't find me 
this is love. Some can be stacked, the others topple. There's a corner to buy things, a corner to remember things, mostly beers, bruised mulberry footprints lead off into the fall of the park, into the snow. Grasses that are not grown, but hanging, hanging. I 
climbing up to the stairs attached to a conveyor belt. Orion, water, light, air, fill a void in the center of the building. Air, air, shaft, star, 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 well, this is how angels get in. This is how angels get up and out and on the moon. Who knows who else drops into the space and looks up at night. storage bins, an overturned urn, layers of wall, paper drafting windows need attention, green, paint, drop, cloth and never drop something, clean and sweet and polish and devotion and energy all its own. R.C. Harden sees maintenance as an art form, a way of blessing the place, paying attention to the Zen intellectual property. I caution, detail the corners clockwise and don't disturb the spiders. They are well trained, well trained as the armed hoppers out the yard. There's an art to everything. Paul Van Curen was the first musician caught in the fragile web Shovel, drill, hammer, fork, screwdriver, wheelbarrow, cut hands, pots and pans, constitute a humble movement, buzz, buzz, very much time, the changing seasons. Some things never change. In Cleveland, one can find plenty of lack, lack of imagination, lack of power share, housing, equitable food space, sense and sense, common sense, unity, but there's no lack of affordable space. Empty buildings lie and topple. Isolated individuals, they stand on wooden paint legs. And the practice of art making is something that can occur alongside the everyday acts of living, not only a retreat to the woods, behind locked studio doors. Artists are not out of place when they form a symbiotic relationship within a community. Hammering out professional careers is not enough, is not enough, is not enough, is not enough. Especially when the elders of a neighborhood aren't taken into consideration and people just move in and go whole hog, changing the place without even taking stock of the place, knowing who is in the place, who the neighbors are, who aren't neighbors, are neighbors, neighbors. Rachel Levitsky, what was the name of your book? Are you in the room, Rachel? Raindrops are spoken of as having careers from condensation to Great Lake upwards. They careen from the sky. Now, 500 gallon water catchment marries the garden to the building, gutters to brick and mortar escarpment, one season to another, pennies from heaven, the who and what, the who and what, the what and who, to who, rain, darkness, capture, run off, above. Diddle for talking leaves, talking trash, get enough of them to a room and you have poetry. Crunch, 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 I want to go to the leaf room. Why? I want to go leaf around. Oh, what a bunch of leaves. Worldly sense, otherworldly sense, climbing stairs on invisible legs. One pound at a time. Sassafras, scent, rising, higher and higher, higher and higher. Po, 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 po,
same states, remembering, 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 and how we got here from there, Earth, the only home of that. We trash this planet as if there's somewhere else to go. And what a waste, what a waste to waste these once great majestic cities cry, cry. of where performance and the visual and the space and all these things come together. Uh, and because uh, my memory of what I do when is kind of scattered, if any of you have any memories of any prior performances when you saw me do what, when, feel free to fill up the open. This is plan nine. I had uh, so many different plans. I won't say what they all are, but I will tell you, I had planned an elaborate neighborhood walk. Mm. Wow. Wow. And anyway, um, I'm kind of out of time, um, out of out of, um, out of out of out of out of out of the weather.
wind, now angel heaven, heaven, heaven. Or should I assume you're someplace else? She muses. Looking for, we were looking for 
instead of dragging that pole bean of a night forecast with the butt ugly sun, umbilical cord, daddy hooked up, knocked you up so you could see at all hours of the day. I remember it following you around like E.T. dragging his feet, black lineage of wires, nooses, plugs, and your boyfriend Van Gogh, 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 in the corner waiting to be lit up such as the day you blew your thumb up. Lighting that firecracker on the Suffering was fundamental to life, to light. If we demand sincerity of an artist, we must remember that sincerity is not to be found outside the realm of grief. Whoa. The realm of grief. Whoa. Over the hills and over the Get that blue, you could 
all those views, robin eggs, pure, except they, since they, no, they didn't fall out of the sky, except to vary the tones. Now you're getting abstract. A truish hue, a truish ho, ho, ho. The blue you use, the blue that you use. I'm not you, taking you, you, on you, human you. form anymore. Varying from to guess the rest to of the image. Is this an argument? No. A confirmation, dear Lord, I wouldn't wish earth on anyone at this time. Now that they found the lie, let them keep it. <laughs> <laughs> then don't come back down here anymore until you get back to clean it up, 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 up. There she blows. Seems like folks leaving every day. God must be token them up. Must want an army of artists to see what we see, see, saw, see. Emissions, rain, paint things. There are other blues I could use. I is right. Let's see. On their way, marching up. A blue, 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 Violet, amethyst, as an amethyst you to follow the yellow brick road, the golden stairway to heaven, the pea green peace, the well, the well, the well, the well, the well, the well, it comes back again every now and then.